Hello YouTube. This video is about this shock and why we're doing this project over again. This shock would be fine if this axle just moved straight up and down. However, in past videos we've learned that this axle also moves to the rear as you bounce it up and down. Now this joint right here can handle moving like this, but it can't handle moving like this. So we have to redesign it. The first thing we have to do is remove the old shock. This is the old upper mount. The height of it is okay, but where the hole was, it was so close to the frame that we had to clearance the frame in order for the shock to fit. So we want to make this hole a little further out here, like maybe an inch, and that way we won't have to clearance the frame anymore. And then we went through several iterations. You'll have to excuse my drawings, but they're not the best in the world. And we came up with this one. This one's pretty close. Uh, we didn't like the curved end like that, and the neck was a little thin. So we went to another one, and I made the same mistake. I made make the neck too thin. We got one that we liked. The neck was nice and thick, but we still didn't know what to do with the end. In the end, we decided to make it simple. We have a 45 at the end here. The original hole was here. The center point was there. Our mounting surface will be here, flat with the center point and one inch further out of the frame. When we have a paper pattern, what we need to do is cut it out. And in fabrication, as a lot of it is about removing material. So let's start removing some material. Now we have our pattern. This is our original pattern. These are photocopies that I cut out just to lay out on a piece of metal so that we would get the best use of the metal. Now the next step is to cut this one out. Here we go with our first cut. You don't need a bandsaw to do these kind of projects. You can do it with a jigsaw. It just takes a little while. And in fact, the bandsaw can't cut the corners here, so I am going to use a jigsaw. The trick is to go slow. If you go fast, the blade will get burned up. If you go slow, you do go slow, but it won't burn up the blade. Here's our pattern. This is the first piece that we've cut out. There's a major flaw with it. This piece right here is too thin to weld to. It's not going to have any strength. So I've made a new pattern out of aluminum that's much thicker down here, and it will have a lot of strength and the shock will fit very nicely in there. So we'll proceed with this pattern. We have four brackets cut out roughly. We have a pattern which I don't know what we do with and we have a defective one which we put in our scrap pile. What we're going to do now is take this to the sandblaster and get all the scale off of it. Then we're going to stack them all up together, run a bead across it, and then we'll final grind them so that they're all the same. What we have here is all four brackets tacked together. And what we're going to do is go outside and grind them so they're all the same. And that way it'll look like they came out of a CNC machine. We have a little grinding here to make them all look the same. We have our four pieces looking like one big piece. What we need to do now is break it apart. So let's try this. There's one. There's two. And there's three and four. And now what we'll do is uh, round the edges a little bit to make it look a little more professional. We have our upper shock mount brackets cut out, finalized, and smoothed out. This is the shock we're going to use, and what we have to do now is build a bridge between the two mounts to fasten the top shock mount to. The bushing in here 
it's quite thick. If I was to use the same gauge metal, it moves around. So I'm going to have to go to a heavier gauge metal for the bridge so that that doesn't move around. I've cut out some one and a quarter inch squares to be the bridge between the two brackets. We need one and a quarter inches because the bushings are one and a quarter inches and we want them to fit the between the brackets. The next step is to drill a hole in the center of this so that it'll go onto the shock. We'll start by drilling an eighth inch pilot hole. We'll go to 730 seconds. We'll go to 3 eighths. We'll go to half inch. And we'll go to 9 sixteenths. 5 eighths. 11 sixteenths. 3 quarters. 13 sixteenths. And finally 7 eighths. And we'll do a trial fit on our bushing here. And it fits in the hole real nice. This is what our mount looks like with the bridge in place and the shock screwed into it. But we got to do something about the ears splaying apart. As you can see, they're a little bit spread apart here. So we're going to have to put something here to keep them from spreading apart. What I did is cut some heavy wall tubing and put it inside the mounts to stabilize the, the bottom. And they're both now ready for welding. Here we are tacking the shock towers together. It's going to take some time. There's a lot of welding to be done. Let's unclamp it. Let's see what it looks like on the car. There you go. What do you think? And with the shock set in place, this is what it looks like. So now we got to do the finish welding and we got to come up with a lower mount. I have ordered three different sets of weld on tabs for the axle and none of them work. These are slanted for some reason. They're not made to go straight up from the axle and they're for an inch and three quarters axle tube. So I can't use them. Now this is for a three inch tube but it's straight up and down. So I can't use any of those. What I've decided to do is to modify this set so that it will work on our axle. And what I have to do is get a two inch hole in there, like that. But how you do that when there's no guide for the guide drill? What I've decided to do is to weld this tab to a piece of metal that's square that I can put in the drill press and then I can have a pilot hole right there and drill my two inch hole. So let's see if we can do that. What we have here is the base plate that we're going to use to drill our pilot hole with a bracket clamped in place and we're going to try to run a bead along the bottom here so that we can use the hole saw to cut the uh, two inch hole. I never claimed to be a, a good welder, but right here is not too bad. I'm learning. We'll start the process of using the hole saw by drilling an eighth inch pilot hole for the pilot drill in the hole saw to follow. Now we'll jump to the two inch hole saw. So there's our first bracket. We have a pair of shock mount towers finish welded. We have a set of axle tabs that are at the right height and have the right size hole in them. What we'll do next is go position them on the car and then weld them up. We leveled out the frame. We carefully positioned the lower shock mount and clamped it to the frame. Then we hung a plumb bob from the upper shock mount and clamped it to the frame when the plumb bob was directly over our lower mount. Here we are tacking the shock towers in place. 
What does it take to, to tack a, an attachment in? Let's watch. Position is always important, so you got to move around when you do it. Now there's a little bit of a gap in this weld, so this will be challenging. He has to fill a little bit here because of the gap. So this tack takes longer. We're alternating sides so we don't get anything hot. We don't want to warp it. We've got it tacked in four corners now, and it should be strong enough to hold the shock. In order to put the shock in, we need to remove the spacer that is between the two ears on the lower shock mount that was put there for welding so that the ears would not be too close together. This is a gas shock which expands and what we've done is wire tied it together so that we can put it in here without fighting the gas and we'll slip the bolt in, bolt in put a nut on it Clip the wire ties and the shock will expand up into the upper mount. We'll put our top bushing in and the washer and the nut. This is what our shock installation looks like. I'm pretty happy with it. I believe we've accomplished what we set out to do. If you enjoyed this video, there'll be more. And by the way, I can almost guarantee that the next video will not be a bracket mount.